I've been software engineer for the better part of a decade, um, and I've run a consultancy for three years now, software engineering business. And, uh, and so I've learned a lot, and I want to cover basically um, a bunch of advice and, and, and thoughts and collect uh, different things. And I want to answer a couple of key questions that I think a lot of software engineers have. So uh, what makes a good software engineer? How do you get hired as a software engineer nowadays? It's extraordinarily competitive now. It's, uh, you know, you have a lot of layoffs. You have more applicants per job. You have senior guys going for, um, you know, more mid-level roles. How do you compete? How do you launch a business as a software engineer if that's what you want to do? So if you want to run your own thing, like how do you go about doing that? How do you transition into it? What are also some of the pros and cons? I think that's a big thing. Like people don't actually realize the pros and cons of, of starting a, uh, a business and, uh, you know, what that means versus being a software engineer itself. So I'm going to start with the first one, like what makes for a good software engineer, right? So what actually makes you a good engineer as opposed to a bad one? Um, a lot of people, you know, focus on development and coding and they think, you know, just it's just about like being really good at writing code. It's not just that. I think it boils down to a few key things and that is attention to detail, curiosity and willingness to learn and communication. So it's the ability to communicate, the ability to to realize what details are off and it's the ability to learn quickly. Those three things make you an extraordinarily powerful, I would say, person in general, but especially in, in, in engineering. Um, if you are very detail oriented and you can identify mistakes and learn from them, and you have a natural curiosity for all things tech and software and that kind of thing, you will become a very, very skilled engineer. Um, and that will make you a very powerful engineer on any team. And that ability to communicate is one of the most key ones that I think a lot of engineers do not realize. When I say communicate, it's not just about communicating to other people so like actually you know talking between your team but even in terms of communicate to the outside world what you're good at so make a nice portfolio website make a nice um you know case study write a blog about something that you learned like tell me about the things that you are studying communicate to me what you are doing that makes you a far better engineer that makes you more hireable as well that actually answers that second question of how do you get hired um but you know, just to, to stay focused on that first one of how to become a really good software engineer. It's all about staying curious and learning how different technology plays with each other and about learning and, and observing the little, little details. So, for example, one of my favorite examples um, in JavaScript, you have null and undefined. What is the difference between those two terms? Right. It's like these little things, these little nuances. If you get really familiar with these differences, with these tiny little details, you will out engineer other people. Moving on. How do you get hired? You know, in, in such a competitive landscape, I done hiring myself. You know, um, and uh, I've been approached to like uh, and offered jobs and things. Um, I think the main thing actually comes down to marketing. So your ability to market yourself—that is how you get hired. It's not just about being an extraordinarily good engineer, but it's about being able to showcase your work to the world more effectively. So you need to be able to showcase what you've built, what you've worked on, and how skilled you are as a person. Demonstrate through technical articles, through um, maybe projects, things like that that you might host and let people check out, or blog posts, things like that. So you have to kind of show and prove to the world that you're good at what you do. And like that, I speak on this in terms of like getting hired overall. Um, when it comes to kind of like lengthy interview processes and corporate processes, there's a, there's a bunch of people who speak on that stuff specifically, but it still comes down in order to get noticed. It still comes down to your ability to tell more of the world. Actually, to be honest, a lot of this nowadays is, is social media. Like if you want to get hired faster, be active on social media and post about the stuff that you're doing. I am um, post about, you know, the technical challenges you face, how you solve them, like write blogs, stuff like that. People will pay attention. Potential employers will look at that. And that goes a very, very long way. So that's, you know, like how to get hired and, and stuff like that. Um, then I, I would move on to like, okay, I'm considering starting my own business. Do I want to do that? Do I not? Uh, what are the pros and cons of that? And I think this is, there is such a big misconception. I see so many people who want to run their own business, but I don't think they fully understand what it entails. And I, I know that for a fact, I didn't understand what it entailed. When I started out, I was a developer and I was like, oh, I'm a developer. I want to make a development business. And there's basically two routes to go. If you start a development business and you want to really scale it, you will become more focused on business than on development. Your day-to-day -day is more about business than it is about development. That is true for me now. Um, I started this business and I was engineering a lot more than I am today. And I do love engineering, but I found that I also love business. I really fell in love with it. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I grew to like the numbers and stuff like that. There's a lot of interesting stuff in business, but it is fundamentally different from software engineering. As a software engineer, you can spin up your own like small consultancy and basically become like a very highly paid contractor. Maybe you have a couple other contractors with you, 
But if you really want to scale and do your own business, you will be focused on business side of things, business marketing. That is what your primary activity will become. And so, you know, don't don't be fooled into thinking that you can just be developing and that will you know spawn a business of its own. That's not how it works. I think there's a lot of this misconception. A lot of people think that you can just work on building something and then you can throw up a business. But it is a lot about figuring out distribution and that kind of things, which people do not think about as much. Um, and so when it comes to the pros and cons, like it's basically, do you actually want to leave development and get into doing business and doing marketing all the time? Or do you want to stay in the code? Um, because I think that that's the major question that you have to ask yourself if you want to move um, into a business or not. And then the other thing is uh, also business is just a lot less stable. So you constantly have to fend for yourself. There's a lot more unknowns. You know, it can be rewarding, but the, the stability of a job is also very appealing. So those are the main pros and cons. Now, let's say, okay, actually, I do want to build a business. and I do want to launch my own thing. Um, how do you go about doing that? The main thing is you have to figure out what problem you're best at solving and, and who you know um, and figure out what problems they have. So in my case, I started a, a development business, like a services business. I think that's the best kind of business to start because you don't require any upfront capital, but there's essentially two businesses that you can start, which is either build a tech product, so like SaaS type of thing or any kind of tech product, or um, go into a software development service kind of business one way or another. Uh, those are the businesses that you can launch out of being a developer. Obviously, there's a, a, a plenty of other businesses that you can also do, which are unrelated to that. But I want to cover those two. Um, in the SaaS business model, I have a whole rant on this. Uh, but essentially, you have to spend a lot of your time marketing the product. Or actually, like almost all the time in both business models, you have to spend marketing. But in the SaaS business model, um, one of the key difficulties and the reason that I don't think it's a great model to start with, unless you have funding, is that you need to get a large amount of customers in order to hit some kind of escape velocity in terms of revenue. So if you sell, let's say you sell something at $10 a month and you sell 100 people, you now have $1,000 a month. With $1,000 a month, you cannot hire anybody. Like you cannot really properly hire people or expand or do anything. Whereas in the services business, you spend a bunch of time marketing and you land a contract for let's say 10 grand. 10 grand already lets you maybe hire another engineer to help out and then you land a contract for 15 and then you can you know build um, from there on out. So it's it's generally easier to do a lot of good for a small group of people rather than a little good for a lot of people, which is what you have to do in the SaaS, right? You have to sell something of a little value, let's say five, ten, twenty dollars a month, and you have to sell that to a huge customer base in order to make some real money. Whereas in the services business, you basically sell high ticket items to a very small group of people. And I generally find that's kind of easier. Um, at least when you're starting out, when you don't have money to put into ads and stuff like that, when you don't have a huge distribution base, essentially, um, when you don't have the ability to distribute at scale. Um, those are the main kind of reflections. If, if you want to get started in a software services business, you basically have to just find that first client, so do something for them, engineer for them, figure out the stack. I've made videos on this. Uh, you can find all the videos on my channel about how to start a software development agency from scratch, like for beginners. Um, Generally, though, I think you also need some software engineering experience to do that, right, to complete the service well. And then the other side of it, doing SaaS, is basically um, you just have to start by creating a very simple MVP and then marketing it as much as possible. The marketing, I would say, like social media is the most cost-effective way. You can do ads, you can do cold outbound, you can do um, warm outbound. Social media is like quite scalable for very cheap. That's what makes it appealing. And the reality is that's also very good for, for the agency model as well. So I think in either situation, you basically um, launch yourself on social media and you will spend a lot of time doing that and thinking about that. So you really leave the code um, side, to, to be honest. Uh, you spend a lot of time networking, you have to talk to clients, that becomes basically your full-time job. And um, if you are not that type of person, that's probably not something you'll enjoy. Anyway, that's uh, those are some, some very quick thoughts. Uh, do let me know if you have other questions and if I should make like a kind of part two or version two of this video. Also, if you are a contractor or freelancer, I have a database of talent. I have a talent network for people, um, for freelancers. Uh, we help companies hire freelancers and stuff. So if you need work, if you're looking for gigs and placements, do fill out that form in the description. But otherwise, I hope it well, was at least somewhat helpful. And um, do subscribe if you haven't already, because most people who watch this channel are apparently unsubscribed. So, you know, if you want to support, that's much appreciated. Thank you.